in a world that we're in like today, I think it's extremely important to gather as much information as you possibly can and formulate your own opinion. And that's something that I really try to do, especially with real estate. I listen to the bears, the bulls, and come up with my own information that's locally driven and proceed forward as best as I know how and help my clients move forward as well. Well, that's what we're doing today is RE Venture is a real estate YouTube channel that does a really good job of digging in and diving into the data and analysis. Really takes it up a level as far as diving into numbers. That being said, he is probably one of the biggest bears on YouTube in regards to the housing market. And me being in real estate, brokerage, and investing personally, I tend to probably lean more being a bull and pro the real estate market as far as buying and investing. But I think it's extremely important, as I have said, to listen to these people who's bringing really great, great data to discuss how things could possibly turn up on its head. So today, thankfully, Ari Venture did a video on Northern Colorado. Well, actually I should say Colorado, but the four major metros of Colorado, Colorado Springs, Denver, Boulder, and Fort Collins. So I thought it'd be a really great opportunity for me to bring to you a response video. So today we are going to be responding to a guy that I think is very intelligent, very smart, just maybe some alternative views that I have. So what's up everybody? My name is Patrick Sugup with Sugup Real Estate Services here in Fort Collins, Colorado. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if what you're looking at doing is learning everything there is to know about Northern Colorado and Fort Collins, living, eating, sleeping, playing, working, buying real estate. And if at the end of the video, you've enjoyed the content, please consider giving it a thumbs up, comment, engage, maybe even share it with your friends. And as much as we like making these real estate videos for YouTube, we like more working with buyers, sellers, and investors for all their real estate needs for everything here in Northern Colorado. So give me a call, text, email, whatever it is, I've got your back when it comes to Northern Colorado real estate. Without any further delay, let's jump into today's response video to RE Ventures 30% housing crash in Colorado. Enjoy. So definitely the title of his video is clickbait you know, to the most. He never specifically mentions how Colorado is going to drop 30%, but he does talk directly to how Colorado's market could come crashing down. And maybe he does actually have data that he believes that the market could crash 30%, but specifically he talks to and how we are going to address is four specific things. Colorado housing prices versus the rest of the nation, migration numbers, migration numbers versus housing starts, housing permits, and income versus housing values. And we'll go through each, each of those four and address each of them, how they pertain to Fort Collins specifically. And throughout this video, I believe based off of some of the numbers that he's pulling, he is considering houses as far as housing prices, both residential detached and attached buildings. So when we're talking about these prices, we are talking about all encompassing prices for that. So to get us started, we're going to talk about Colorado housing prices versus the rest of the nation. Just how high are these home prices compared to the average US home price and how much have they changed over time? That's a key question to ask and we're gonna dig into that right now. And so what I'm showing you guys on this graph are four lines. Each of these lines corresponds to one of the metro areas in Colorado. So in green, we have Boulder. In red, we have Denver. In blue, we have Fort Collins. And in orange, we have Colorado Springs. So definitely, as you saw in 2007, we were only about $45,000 above the average value home in the nation. And now 
we are quite a bit above that, $190,000 above the average price house in the nation. You could suggest that back in 2007, we had been continually listed as one of the best places to live. And when you get listed as the best place to live, people want to find out why. They want to explore, figure it out, come and enjoy that lifestyle. Now, I can absolutely say that that hasn't necessarily changed. We're very fortunate to be working with clients from across the country, whether that's Boston, Virginia, South Dakota, Florida, Ohio, you name it, we're working with people from all over the place. And a lot of them are moving to Fort Collins and Northern Colorado specifically for the lifestyle choice. But in 2007, there was kind of this hidden value factor of they were gonna be able to move to Colorado and really for just a fraction above the average median price in the United States, they were gonna get into to live in the best place to live in America. Well, now you're paying a significant premium, 60% premium to live in the best place in America, comparatively to the average priced home throughout the United States. So that being said, yeah, it's absolutely, the secret's out, Fort Collins, Northern Colorado has been an amazing place to live for many, many years. We continue to do a really good job to maintain our small town culture, allowing the community to grow and the population to flourish. Now you would ask a lot of kind of old heads that, and maybe they feel differently, maybe they feel like the, you know, the town's gone to shit, whatever that might be, but now you're absolutely paying a premium in Fort Collins. And to be able to do that, you have to be able to provide the infrastructure and the value that people want to see if they're gonna be coming and living in this place. So Wi-Fi, entertainment, sports, market, movies, uh, musicals, everything like that. And I think we've done a really good job of bringing music, arts, and culture, maybe not a ton of sports, but a lot of different commercial opportunities for people to explore and enjoy when they moved to here in Northern Colorado comparatively to what it was in 2007. Now, as far as that premium that you're gonna be paying, worth $190,000, that's for you to decide. People are bringing these high paying jobs from across the nation and basically being able to afford these premium prices in a premium place to live. So yes, we are dramatically different as far as a premium than we were in 2007. And maybe we provided those additional values, maybe we don't. Now Fort Collins might be the one that bucks the trend a little bit. We still have this big surge in 2015 migration in Fort Collins, but it's done a better job at holding these high levels of migration really from 2012 to 2019 fort collins has really had its strongest migration in its history so of the four metros i think actually that fort collins is displaying the best fundamentals in terms of continued high migration despite this dip that it's had in 2020. so the next thing that we're talking about is this migration surge and i know that he's talking about if you talk to boots on the street realtors everyone's saying there's so many people moving here, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he's showing that there's four different locations, Colorado Springs, Denver, Boulder, and Fort Collins, that yes, we have had this huge migration surge through 2007 up to really 2013, 14. But since that time, numbers have been decreasing. We are still seeing a net inflow migration, but at a lower rate and a decreasing rate than what we have been seeing. So there's risk there of maybe this isn't the haven or people are not seeing the value, what we just spoke about in the previous section that there used to be. And so less and less people are moving in comparatively to who are moving out. Now, that being said, Fort Collins did stand above the crowd as far as net migration inflow. And you know, there's been articles in the Wall Street Journal about you know, people leaving small counties, small communities, and then the Census Bureau just came out and said that the Midwest was really where everybody was moving over the last decade. And then you look at Fort Collins population increase and you see about a 1.5% population increase versus the average throughout the United States of a 1% increase of population. So I just don't necessarily see this declining. Now I could see more and more locals potentially moving out because of affordability issues, but with the gig economy and people wanting a lifestyle design, Fort Collins and the ability to come and enjoy the sun, be outdoors, and be healthy really is appealing and people are bringing that mentality along with their high paying jobs. So unfortunately, Fort Collins 
really needs to figure out the biggest thing is jobs and producing higher earning jobs so that we can keep our locals in town. And then that net migration will continue to be a positive number for Fort Collins and Colorado. Next, we're gonna jump into the section where he's gonna to talk to you about the difference and the change in dynamic between net migration and housing starts. So let's jump into that video and see kind of what he has to say about Fort Collins. Now, onto Fort Collins. Again, I think this is kind of the outlier. Fort Collins seems to have more of a legitimate housing shortage than the other three metros. You can see that migration over permitting is above this equilibrium level through 2019. 2020 was really the first year where it was really below that level, which is not good. You know, the migration levels did decline a lot in Fort Collins. However, it seems to have more of a justified housing shortage than these other markets. Now, as you can see, really there was many, many years where the difference between housing starts and net migration was dramatically different. We had this huge shortage. And in fact, the United States has a 5.5 million home unit shortage. And if you include the houses that we're losing every year to destruction from weather, you know, storms, demolition, and functional obsolescence, we're actually at 6.8 million homes shortage. And it would take us to increase our production by 700,000 homes a year, up to 2 million homes. We're right around 1.3 million homes produced a year. We would need to increase that to 2 million homes per year for the next 10 years for our housing shortage to be hedged, to be, you know, fulfilled. And I just, I mean, especially over the next year or two, I don't see that even being remotely a chance with the supply issues that we're seeing from home builders, which is getting figured out, but also the shortage of skilled workers and labor, unless there is a huge paradigm shift of people moving into tiny houses, multi-generational fat housing, or maybe people are changing, you know, converting single families into duplexes, and we see this huge increase of inventory or, you know, less demand for inventory. And so the increase, the homes that are being built can actually fulfill the need. But Fort Collins is no different. And with our net migration exceeding what is the average for the United States of 1% versus our 1.5%, we're needing more houses than what is at on average needed for the United States. So we need to pick it up like crazy to be able to build. In Fort Collins, there's not a ton of infill opportunities. Now there are some developments and a lot of those are multifamily proper, you know, projects that are going on. So what you're gonna see is the Timnitz, Windsor, Wellington, Loveland's really pick up the pace that Fort Collins just can't necessarily build. So. Fort Collins and Northern Colorado, we see no difference between this last 20 years of shortage versus now what we need over the next 10 years. And policy and government and developers all have to be on the same page to be able to provide this housing construction boom that we will need to see to supply the demand that is there. So I don't necessarily see that being any different and even though, yes, our net migration is decreasing, we still have so much houses to build. So unless there's this mass exodus from Fort Collins, Northern Colorado and Colorado, the demand for housing is just not going to be met. And if this little girl has anything to say about people moving out of Colorado, I just don't think it's gonna happen. Who would move away from this little girl's face? Huh? <laughs> what do you think? You crazy, huh? <laughs> I mean, do you tell me to do this? What are you going to do? I like my teacher. I like Lauren. And I like my friends. And I like to play some games. And I like my talent. Yes. And I like Rocky. And I like Mom. And I like Dad. I like Nola. I like Dad. I like Mom. I like da mo <laughs> Mommy. Okay. You say night night. Night night. So the last thing that Ari Venture talks about is I do think one of the biggest issues that Fort Collins and Colorado in general has to overcome, which is the value of our homes versus the earnings that our population is generating. So let's jump into that video or that section of the video to see kind of how Fort Collins adds up from 2007 to today. 
We can see that Fort Collins has the second highest value to earnings at 9.8. Denver is third at 9.0. And then Colorado Springs is fourth at 8.2. So as you can see, there's definitely been a shift from our, the biggest thing has been the value of our properties have increased so much that now our earnings are, you know, it takes about 9.8 times our income to get to the value of the property in question. And that is definitely an issue. Whether that be the city of Fort Collins really investing in bringing businesses into our economy, or fortunately, and I hope this happens more and more, is the people that are moving into Fort Collins from around the country are bringing high paying jobs and bringing their headquarters to Fort Collins. And potentially our tech scene and startup scene could start, start up a little bit better and be better and produce better incomes. But if our income, if our values or homes keep increasing, our incomes won't be able to, you know, increase fast enough. So there's going to be there's going to have to be something that gives, whether that's incomes, you know, really inflate or housing values at least plateau for a while, while incomes maybe catch up. But that is definitely one of the weakest parts that I see Fort Collins needing to overcome and address really immediately. So those are kind of the four sections that RE Venture addressed and you know the housing prices of Colorado versus the nation, yes. Our value proposition, we are no longer a value buy. And if people are going to move here, there needs to be a value proposition for them. What jobs are here? What's the fun and entertainment? Lifestyle design, of course, but do the property values match everything for that? And is it worth it for them to do that? You know, that's up to, to individuals to decide. Net migration, still very, very strong. 1.5% versus the percent on average for the population. And then you take into consideration housing starts. Yeah, our housing starts have caught up to our net migration because it has decreased a little bit, but we're talking about a 20 year backlog of houses that need to be built for it to fulfill the demand that is there. So our supply just is gonna have, it's gonna take a lot of work to meet that demand. And finally, absolutely, our incomes are just not there to justify a lot of the prices of homes in town. And what's that saying is that either there's a lot of gig workers that have come in producing incomes that are able to afford it and that our locals really do are struggling. And so we do need to take that into consideration and hopefully we can either have some high paying jobs, employers, opportunities come into town and increase those incomes. Now, as far as a crash goes, we need to see inventory spike for it to really see prices decline because ultimately we get down to basic economics. Supply and demand equals price. And right now our supply is so low and our demand is so high that our prices have just continually to tick up and up and up. He suggests that there's a million home backlog of listings that did not come onto the market in 2020 due to COVID and that those are waiting to pour on. And between the eviction moratorium, mortgage forbearance, and other programs, we could see this inventory increase. And grant, you know, and and seriously, I hope it does increase. Right now, we're at one month supply of inventory, and historically speaking, six months is a healthy market. Well, I've never personally seen six months in my career in real estate, and what I'm seeing is maybe even if it got to three, so three times the inventory that would actually supply some relief to this real estate market three times plus. But who's to say those million people who didn't sell their house in 2020 are considering selling? There's a lot of things to be considered now. Can you afford to sell your house and go find another house that's just as expensive? Unless you're going to move out of uh, Colorado or your location into a more affordable location, possibly. Or what other things could change to make those million people all of a sudden come on? The eviction moratorium, mortgage forbearance, those are all gonna be very long drawn out processes for inventory to really pick up. So if we're gonna see any type of inventory spike, maybe this million people person backlog does come to fruition and I hope it does, that there's a substantial amount of listings that come onto the market. But as far as eviction moratorium and mortgage forbearance, that is going to take time, significant amount of time, probably anywhere from 30 to 90 days for the evictions to start to get processed, landlords to put their properties onto the market and then sold, 
and then much, much longer for mortgages to go through the foreclosure process and then in turn get sold onto the market. So unless there's crystal ball, you know, I see that Fort Collins is definitely a, a still a pretty strong place to buy. There's two things that I really agree with that RE Ventures discusses. And that's one, if you have a five to 10 year horizon of buying and holding, I think it's a really good time, still a good time to buy really anytime historically. If that is your time horizon, you'll probably do just fine. And then secondly, talk to your realtor, whether it's guy, girl, or whoever, about what their strategies are. And if they're just trying to sell your house to cut a check for themselves, you know, question their all, you know, their motives. What are they, what are they pitching? What are they slinging? Are they themselves buying a house? Have they bought a house? Do they live in a house that they own? Do they invest? Are they still investing? I can tell you with certainty that one, I'm refinancing a uh, duplex right now, and I'm also buying a partner out of a triplex because I'm very strongly opinionated that Fort Collins, Northern Colorado is still a really great place to buy, but I'm not making any predictions. I'm just responding to what I'm seeing as far as boots on the ground and responding to RE Ventures video about a 30% price decline in Colorado. I respect his opinions and how much data he really drives in. And somebody's gonna be right. The bears or the bulls, somebody's gonna be right. Or maybe it's gonna be one in between a hybrid animal that just kind of stagnates for the next five to 10 years. I'd be okay with that. But that being said, hopefully this video has helped you understand at least my perspective on what RE Ventures video put out there and helped you kind of see a different perspective from maybe somebody here in Boots on the Ground, Colorado. So thanks for watching guys. If you, again, if you guys haven't already, please consider subscribing, giving a thumbs up, comment, engage. And if you haven't already, you know, give me a call, text, email if you're looking at buying, selling, or investing here in Northern Colorado. Until next time guys, take care.